Australia, the land down under, is experiencing a poker boom ignited by a native son and world champion, Joe Hasham. Melbourne's spectacular Crown Casino plays host to the largest poker tournament in Australian history, boasting a prize pool of more than $3 million, with a million going to the winner. Recognized as one of the world's premier tournaments, the event has drawn the biggest names in the game from around the globe to compete with the best from down under and see who will come out on top in the PartyPoker.net Aussie Millions. A field of 418 came to Australia to etch their name in the history books. Early on, locals were the whole story, proving that Melbourne has some of the best in the world. Some tried to take cover, but as the tournament unfolded, the biggest names in poker fell, including Australia's own Joe Hasham and tournament favorite Kenna James. With just four players left, the final chapter in this year's tournament will be written and a million dollar first prize awarded. At the final table, Alabama phenom Shannon Shore will face off against the Serbian Nidad Badic. And California young gun Robert Neary, and they'll all be chasing poker veteran and chip leader Lee Nelson. It's the Party Poker.net Aussie Million. We welcome you to the Crown Casino here in Melbourne, Australia, where tonight someone will walk off with one million dollars. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. You know my partner, the noted poker author, Michael Koenig. And college basketball has its final four, and tonight poker will have its final four. And like college basketball, you got your Floridas and you got your George Masons. Well, our Cinderella story tonight would certainly have to be the two young Americans. Robert Neary and Shannon Shore. Shannon Shore is playing in his very first live tournament ever. And he's going up against a guy, Lee Nelson, whose nickname is Final Table. You tell me who the powerhouse is, but this is no limit hold'em. Anything can happen. Somebody's going to win a million dollars. Let's get to it. Lee Nelson is the guy who can dictate everything right now. He is our chip leader, four million and change. The dad, Badich, as you mentioned earlier, has not had a lot to play with, but is still right there. And Shannon Shore, the Internet player, hanging right in there. Clearly, the short stack, of course, is Robert Neary, so he's going to have to do some business fairly quickly. Again, Badich has got to throw away a hand, and Shore with a little pair here. 105. Blinds are 15 and 30,000. Every player ante's 5,000. And Neary with a short stack. Is going to draw that line in the sand. Here he goes. All right. Going all in with that ace jack. Sure, we'll likely go with him. What about Nelson? A lot of extra chips, but discretion the better part of valor. Let these two little fellas fight it out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Which they will do. And in tonight's bantamweight feature, <laughs> Shore versus Neary. Good luck, Paul. Classic. Hey, Player versus two over good. card situation. Any aces out? Guess not, huh? Well, these two guys have done very well just to get this far. And they'll have a good payday no matter what happens here. Three, six. Three, six, eight. Seven. Keeps sure as a pretty decided favorite. Turn card. On the turn. It is an ace for Neary. Wow. And Shore needs the one remaining five in the deck. Nelson folded the other five. And Neary will double through Shore. So the two short stacks have an at one another, but Neary coming up first best. Robert Neary, a guy who uh, attends Sonoma State. University of the San Francisco Bay Area, terrific golfer, and a guy who is uh, pleased to be here. Uh, I got a scholarship to Sonoma State University, and once I got there, um, I found out I found I had some free time, in which I started playing cards. I started doing well. Never had a million dollars on the line, but <laughs> I love to compete. I just try to you know play the cards right. So far, honestly, I, I don't even think I've. I've play all my hands correctly. I played some correctly, but not all of them. I know I, I could play a lot better. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to get better. You know, I'm trying to have fun. This is
has been really a humbling experience to me. I've played with a lot of great players, and I mean, I've just tried to uh, pick up on things that, that they do, that they say, and, and try to help improve my game. Um, I mean, it would be a dream come true to be a world champion, but do I think I'm at that level yet? I don't know. Well, he's kind of learning on the job, and he's doing a pretty good job, Michael. Yeah, nice little work-study job, huh? You bet. I had to take an internship. Yeah. I don't know about you. <laughs> so, Robert, what'd you do over the summer? Oh, you know, I went down to Australia, played a little golf, yeah. won several hundred thousand dollars in a poker tournament. Other, other than that, nothing. King Jack for sure. Medici has already raised this pot. Blinds have gone up 20 and 40,000. 80,000 in the pot before the cards are dealt. Medici made it 120, and Shore has called. And Nelson wisely will throw away that ace little. So Medici a slight favorite over Shore here. 4 7 deuce on the flop, which doesn't do much for either player. And a check from Medici. And the same response from Shore and a four. So Shore does have a flush draw. But Medici is the favorite and he'll bet. Go all in. And Shore gonna go all in. Now Medici can imagine a lot of hands that have him beat right now. Almost. I see. Throws it away. Well played by Shore. And so Shore will take this one down. Get a little something back oh, that he ahead. lost on the last hand to Neary. Ace high. Not the ace of hearts, though, was it? Uh, no. Shore just sent a little message to Medici. I don't need cards to play. I just need courage. Well, he's still there. The PartyPoker.net. Aussie Millions is brought to you by PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. And Aussie Millions, we're playing for a million dollars. Four players trying to get to that one million. But you know what? Any one of the four can get a pretty darn good payday. 203979 If you're the first one of these four eliminated, that's not bad. On the other hand, everybody who has a bunch of chips has a little thought in the back of their mind. Don't let it be me. Exactly. Let somebody else go out first. I'll put another 77,000 in my pocket. That's exactly right. And speaking of sevens, a pair of them for Nelson. A little good luck charm, that glass koala bear. He has to hope that his cards are not made of eucalyptus leaves. Ooh, very good. And Medici raised this pot. Nelson in the big blind puts in the additional 85,000, and we go to the flop. There's a pair for Medici immediately. Looks like a pretty safe flop for a guy with a pair of sevens. No aces, no kings, no queens. To the turn of five. Right so. now, I think Nelson's loving his hand. So much so that he reaches for those zebra 25s. And 150,000. And likewise, I think Medici likes his hand. I think he does. I think he really should now. This is a case where Lee Nelson probably thinks he's value betting. But in but fact, Medici has the best hand, and it's a value call. Mm -hmm. I call. And just like that, he makes the call and wins the hand. And it's extraordinary at this level, Barry. These so-called little hands are getting into seven figures every time. <laughs> I was just going to say, no small hand that. And absolutely no change of expression on the face of Lee Nelson. That's a pretty good hand. Ace 10 suited. There goes the koala bear.
Lines are 20 and 40,000. 5,000 chip ante. 80,000 to shoot for. Nelson goes up to 130,000. There's the short stack with a pocket pair again. Yeah. Give it a little thought here. And he's going to push all in. How much is that? So now they'll count it up. Nelson wants to know how much. Plus 640. 640. On top of the 130,000 that Nelson already raised. So this is actually a pretty tough call. Lee Nelson needs to put in another 600 and change to win a pot that has 900 and change in it. He's not getting great odds here, Barry. I call. He's going to call. Wow. So now we've got a race. Ace 10 for Nelson. Pair of fives. For Neary. And there's another five. Quite a flop. Wow. It's almost oh, no up. diamonds. But this is the lucky shirt. Oh. Oh, that's four. Well, four. Nelson wow. can catch a four. four. This is going to be sick. <laughs> that's pretty much four. it. Neary. I think Neary's four. just glad four. to be this four. far, to tell you the truth. Oh, just missed. And Neary Thanks. wins this hand and will double up through our chip leader. <sighs> I mean, how much more does Neary have in him? <laughs> I mean, that was an absolute sigh of relief. But guess what? He's still here. We're coming back. Welcome back to PartyPoker.net. Aussie Millions here in the Crown Casino. We're in Melbourne, Australia. Four players left. Million dollars at stake. Everybody going to get a handsome payday. Neary just doubled up through our chip leader. And now Shore with a pretty good looking hand. 80, Down to four handed. Two face cards look awfully pretty. Awfully pretty. Nelson cannot. Good old min race. Well, ace eight. Not likely will uh, get him involved. And Shore made the minimum raise. The blinds are 20 and 40,000, and Shore just bumped it up to 80,000. So pretty easy call there from Medich. Ooh, a nice flop. Shore with three clubs and a king, queen, jack, and four diamonds for Medich. Shore with his continuation bet gets a call out of Medich. And a pair for Shore. Changes things dramatically, but Medich still's got a flush draw. Check from Shore. Wow. And a three of hearts. That, of course, is no good for Medich. A check from Medich. 75,000. And Shore bets 75000 That's very unusual, Barry. It's in No Limit Hold'em, you almost never see a smaller bet, bet than the previous bet. Remember, on the turn, Shore bet 100000 yeah, Now on the river, only 75000 Medich okay. has got to be saying to himself, what the heck is going on here? I, I think that's exactly what he's saying to himself. And sure enough, it's going to do the job. Shore wins the hand. And that's a nervous kind of look, but, you know, you got to really give it up for Shore and Neary. They're both hanging in there, and now they're both at that point where they're being somewhat competitive. For Shannon Shore, he's a guy who's playing here in uncharted waters. What University of Alabama studied civil engineering? It's a whole different bag here. Well, this is my first live tournament, uh, so I'm pretty happy that I made it this far. I just came over here with the mindset that I wanted to play play well, play in some of the smaller tournaments and take some momentum into the big one. Uh, it's pretty neat. You can see why people get addicted to this, the live tournaments. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's nice to actually play flops when online. A lot of times you're forced to just, you know, shove the chips in. 
think the biggest difference is when you win a pot at home, you can jump up and down and go crazy. Or when you're bluffing at home, you, you can like get up and like move around and say, please don't call, please don't call. But here, you gotta sit motionless. It's pretty crazy. A refreshing guy, isn't it? It's just extraordinary. I mean, very first time this young man has ever played in a live poker tournament. And here he is vying for the Aussie Millions. Absolutely. Both these guys, Neary as well, a college student. Playing against a guy who's won a whole lot. Isn't this interesting? King 10 suited with diamonds and a Queen 5 suited with diamonds. And Shore with an 8-7 suited. So three players to the flop here. 8-6-4 on the flop. Everybody gets a little something here. Shore with top pair. Both Medich and Nelson have flush draws. Nelson also has an inside straight draw. 100,000 to bet from Nelson. Medich will take a look. Raise. Shore is going to raise. Bold. Four hundred thousand total. Four hundred thousand total, he says. And Nelson, who was getting great reads earlier, now doesn't seem to be getting quite the same read. All in. He's going all in. Yikes. Man, Medich, this is an easy fold for him. There's nothing for him to play here. Not for all those chips. Shore is a very different story, though, Barry. I mean, the young man has top pair. He has an inside straight draw. Ironically, both players need the other guy's card yes. to fill their straight. And look at those odds. Even though Shore now has top pair, this is a 50-50 coin flip. Queen-5 suited versus the 8-7 suited with this flop. Experienced player against a guy playing at his first live event. A call. He calls! So we're going to have a race. Let's go. Pair of eights, four diamonds. What's going to happen? We're going to find out. On the other side of this. The PartyPoker.net Aussie Millions is brought to you by PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. Well, it's mano a mano here against a young, inexperienced player facing up against the guy who's been around the track, and not only been around the track, but won. And here's where we are. Shannon Shore's reaction when Lee Nelson flipped over his hand no, sir, that's good. That's good. That's good. leads me to believe that Shore thinks he's actually the favorite here. Oh, no, not anymore. But look at this. Shore has picked up a flush draw. Deuce of clubs. Deuce of clubs. And it's an ace of clubs. Nelson wanted a deuce of clubs. He got an ace of clubs. That's good enough. He wins. Shore will be eliminated. But I'll tell you what, for a young guy, Shannon Shore, Really hung in there, played extremely well, and he's going to go home with a pretty good payday. He's hanging his head right now, but I think when he stops to think about it, he's going to be a pretty happy guy. He gets $203,979, and what'd you do on your summer vacation, Shannon? Well, he moved all in over the top of me. I, I thought maybe he had, he had aces. If he had aces, I was pretty much even money, and then I liked when he, he turned over his hand. It was still even money pretty much, but I don't know. I thought it, I'm probably not going to outplay Lee over time on flops because he's got a lot more experience than me, so I thought I'd take a shot and try to double up and try to win it. Oh, it's been a lot of fun. The tournament was great. The staff was great. We just had a blast. I really wanted the title, though. Money comes and goes, but that title will be forever. Nonetheless, that's a pretty fair accomplishment for that young guy. Yeah, and that man right there is the second happiest player at the table. You're not kidding. He has just moved up the pay ladder, and though he is the short stack, 
Robert Neary has a chance to still win the Aussie Millions, yeah. but he'll have to overcome that man, Lee Nelson, and that man, Nenad Medich. Medich with an ace nine, Neary with a king ten. Pace of play has become rather deliberate at these late stages. Players seem to understand how much is actually at stake. So Neary at that imaginary line in the sand again. Well, there's a king and a ten. Two pair for Neary. Now, with a big flop like that, the temptation is to check, but there is a flush draw possible. There's a straight draw possible. And given Neary's tenuous chip position, I think he would be happy to just take down this pot right now. Right. He's going to raise. Test the medal of this young guy. And this is one of those situations where Neary's got to be thinking, if he has a set, so be it. This is my shot. All right. He's going all in. And he is really showing something here. Nice if he hand. goes out, he's going out in a blaze of glory, and he's not going out. As Medich lays down his hand, Neary nice picks hand. up a big pot. Nice to see somebody else do that besides me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> something, something silly. And that's the two veteran players talking about the mistakes that they made. Playing with some, some of these top-notch poker players in the world, it's, it's pretty surreal. You see them on TV, and you see them in the casino, and it's, it's just crazy. But everybody only gets two cards, and everybody's got to play two cards, so you just hope to cut down on the edge. Welcome back to PartyPoker.net Aussie Millions. We're going to crown a champion before we leave here. We are at the Crown Casino here in Melbourne, Australia. There are now three players remaining in the fight for a million dollars. You can see Medich at 3,470,000, slightly more than Lee Nelson. And Robert Neary is still hanging around. Yeah, he's got half as much as our chip leader, but that's more than he had just a couple of moments ago. Barry, the blinds have gone up 30 and 60,000 with that 5,000 chip ante. And three had to play, the player on the button huge edge gets to act first before the flop and act last after the flop we're going to get some action here i think nelson pair of eights and medici a pair of queens sorry guys <laughs> neary not going to have any part of this medici a decided favorite to the flop oh there was an eight, an eight. Nelson has drawn big. I'll tell you what, though. That ace on the flop might save Medich some chips. One of the hands that Nelson could have reasonably raised with was ace anything. Remember, three-handed, you find an ace, you got to figure you've had the best hand. Well, and Medich is going to call here. Yeah, he's not blinking, is he? Good sign for Nelson with his big hand. He might have a customer. See Nelson, a huge favorite. Check from Medich to Nelson. And being called on the flop, I think Nelson suspects that Medich has an ace and cannot get off of it. 400,000 the bet to Medich. Like he's going to at least call. Wow. He does. You can see a million six hundred eighty-five thousand in the pot right now. A seven of hearts on the river. Nelson's eights still holding up. Check from Medich. Now Nelson knows he has the best hand here. There's no question in his mind. This is an exercise in maximizing profits and I'd say a bet in the third to a half of the pot range would work and yes that's half the pot I like that bet there one more bullet <laughs> one more bullet says Medich and as usual Lee Nelson does yep. not respond not even acknowledge him 
So the onus really on this guy here. 800,000 to win a pot of nearly two and a half million. I'll still have two million. Close. Says I'll still have two million. Trying to get some kind of read out of the eyes of Nelson. Nelson will not make eye contact. He calls. And Nelson will win, just like that. And all Medich could say is nice hand, as Nelson now has put himself in a commanding position. Figured it was that or nothing. I didn't think you were betting an ace like that. Nelson still not commenting. We're coming back. Partypoker.net, Aussie Millions, Barry Tompkins, Michael Koenig alongside here at the Crown Casino in Melbourne, Australia. We are now in the three-handed game. It's a race for a million dollars, over a half million for second. But nobody's thinking about second. And this guy right here in a commanding chip lead. And if you want to get some visual evidence, those... Zebra chips are 25,000 apiece. The yellow birds are 5,000. And next time you take a look at Lee Nelson's stack, looks like a, a game preserve. <laughs> you can hardly see Lee Nelson. A pair of queens and a king. That's a pretty good flop for Neary, isn't it? And the six. Neary slow played that big flop. And... Looks like it's going to pay off. Medich caught just enough here to take a stab. And he just calls. Trying to reel in Medich. Oh, <laughs> he's caught quads. Let's see. You think Neri likes his hand? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> a check. From Medich, and now let's see how near he plays it. The last hand Medich gives Neri is four queens. So the only hand that Medich is worried about now is a king. And if he doesn't have that, he's got to think queens full of sixes is good. I'll call. Quad does call, and he's not going to like what he sees. Wow. Was it 350? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you didn't know what? Uh, 350. Oh, I'm kidding. I would have called it. I thought it was 300, but mine was called. You called anyway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Boy, it's been a couple of tough hands. For that guy right there. Thanks. Well, remember that old adage, never let him see you sweat. And Neary has not let these four season professionals see him sweat at all. And he's moving into second place. Yeah, he's a ways behind Lee Nelson, but he's put... Medich on the short stack now. Medich, king nine. This could be it. Yeah, with his stack so short, I could see him moving here. Uh, uh, I'm going to go all in. He did. <laughs> he did, and it, did, it didn't sound real confident. No, stutteringly. Sort of, yeah. Hold, oh, and look at this. Neary looks down and finds a suited ace. Is it nail in the coffin Five. time? 500. 530K. Well, let's see. Okay. He calls. Cool. He's been playing boldly all afternoon. Why not now? Nelson would love to find another 10. And he did not. Now, this is an interesting situation for the chip leader. It would cost him 410,000 more. Yeah, but... Now there's two guys, and if, if they play nice and just check it down, two hands battling against the all-in player, both of whom have a very vested interest yes. in seeing him eliminated. Yes, they do. Now you're getting full value. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a very smart play, I think, by Nelson, huh? I agree. He would be dismayed to see that he does not have two live cards that the six is duplicated but right now it's not going to make a difference neary retains the lead check check as expected 
And the ten of clubs <laughs> on the turn gives Nelson and a pair. Nelson. And note, he just checks again, even though he has the best hand. And a deuce of clubs. Good game, gentlemen. That's going to take care of Medici, who says, good game, gentlemen. What are you going to do? Nelson, meantime, takes down the pot, as well as eliminating Medici, who I'm sure it was his most feared opponent. Good luck, sir. And, and the happiest guy at the table right here has got to be the guy who had nothing to do with that hand, and that was Neary. Here's where we stand. A million dollars for first place, 500 and change for second. You can see Medici at 282, short 203. Ah, uh, well, very disappointed. Uh, when it got to, the, even the whole, I was confident this whole tournament, but when it was three-handed, I thought I had a really good shot. But this tournament, I've mentioned before, uh, it's been one of the best tournaments that I've ever played at. Uh, the structure has been real good. People have been real friendly. The tournament's been run real well. It's one of the best, one of the best that I've played. I've played a lot of tournaments, so really, really good. When we come back, it's the young Turk and the old pro. Heads up. And that awesome means we're going to give away a million dollars in just a few moments. Head-to-head -head play here at the Crown Casino coming up. But before we tell you about that, let's talk about the Crown Towers, which we visited back in January 2006. Took a quick trip down to the Melbourne Zoo, located just a few miles from the city center. An afternoon strolling through Australia's oldest zoo with the kangaroos and the koalas. Over 350 other species as well. It's a microcosm of the unique diversity of the Australian continent. The zoo's collection, the perfect family-friendly excursion, Another reason why the Crown Towers is the destination in Australia. Lee Nelson, I can report with some authority, did not pick up that shirt at the Melbourne Zoo. He did not. At the gift shop. <laughs> that is his lucky shirt that travels the world with him Sorry. and seems to bring him very good results. Doesn't it, though? This is also uh, Lee's birthday today well he's been given a delightful little gift there of ace queen suited that's true not to mention a minimum of a half million dollars that too neary's got to be thinking i've already won it's all gravy yeah and nelson has just caught a second queen He bets 275,000. Now, Neary really doesn't have anything here to call with. I mean, he has an inside straight draw. A nine would complete that. But it probably needs to fold here. Well, Hold on. <laughs> he raises. Yeah, that may be a little too bold, huh? Well, Barry, I think you hit upon it. He feels like, look, I, this is way more than I ever expected. This is all gravy. This is a total free roll at this point. Why not? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got a draw. I guess you could say that. I think he's just trying to get Nelson to lay down the best hand. Nelson thought about it for a minute and then says, no, I'm going to call. And that, of course, is the worst news that Neary could hear. On the turn. And now it does give him a flush draw as well as that inside straight draw. And more important, it completes a flush in the mind of Lee Nelson. I, you know, I, I think Neary needed to continue to sell the story there because now with Lee Nelson betting, Neary only has two choices fold or go all in. Right. And he folds. I'm sure that's a hand that Neary would like to have back. And I think I detected just a little bit of relief on the face of Lee Nelson yeah, there. Yeah, maybe. He figured he might have been up against a big hand. And he was relieved to find it wasn't so. Lee Nelson is a retired doctor. As we said, he's been around the table. And he's an author as well.
Uh, and I've just written a poker book called Kill Phil. Uh, the reason it's called Kill Phil is because a lot of the top American players are named Phil. Phil Ivey, Phil Helmuth, Phil Locke. And that book is about how to win at No Limit Hold'em tournaments. Hopefully the book will stand me in good stead. So far it has. <laughs> One of the ingredients that uh, a, a winning player needs is they have to be fearless. They have to be have the courage of their convictions. If you see something uh, and, and you, you read a situation, uh, it's not just enough to read the situation. You have to have the courage of your convictions and pull the trigger. Having read the book that Mr. Nelson has co-authored with Blair Rodman, I can personally tell you it is a spectacular read, and it is dangerously informative. <laughs> dangerously if you don't read it, huh? And for all ink-stained wretches out there, go Lee. Yeah, well, you yourself, of course, have written a, a number of books on uh, not only on poker, but on gaming in general, and, and several other topics as well. And I can give Kill Phil my highest endorsement. But back to the action here. Neary now getting a little bit low with his pocket nines. This could be a spot where he might just want to shove it all in. Instead, he calls. And I don't like that play, and I'll tell you why. I don't think Neary is going to outplay Lee Nelson on flops, as we saw on the last hand. And to take a page out of the Kill Phil manual, Neary needs to start moving in on the superior player. Well, he checked to Nelson. And even though Neary is the favorite with those pair of nines, Nelson does have a flush draw. The backbone of the Kill Phil strategy is the all-in move where less experienced players make the better players, the fills of the world, have to commit a whole bunch of chips without a lot of information. And now Neary says, I'm going all-in. I call. And Nelson's going to call, just calmly. So here we go, Neary, a okay, slight baby, favorite. Okay, baby, your first chance, Steve. Let's make it easy. Eight of hearts. Hearts. Nelson Good gets a heart. He will Eight take hearts, down baby. the million dollars. A Put queen right would also there. do nicely here. Yes, a queen will do too. But Eight of hearts. Heart. Oh, nine. nine. Now there another really nine for Neary. Well, Nelson's no outs heart. are any heart, so long as it's not a nine or four, or eight. an eight for a straight. Heart. That's it. Heart. So here is the river. It is a deuce, and Neary will Round double up one. through Nelson. So Neary just not going away here. Nelson's still a big chip lead, but Neary is hanging around here and still in the fray at a chance at a million dollars. You're watching the PartyPoker.net Aussie Million. Million dollars at stake to one of these two men, Lee Nelson, who still has a big chip lead, almost six million in chips, and he is playing head up against Robert Neary at two million three hundred seventy thousand. But Neary just doubled up a moment ago. Things can change quickly, but it's an experienced player against a guy who has limited experience, and that's being kind. One seventy-five. Nelson going to raise it to one seventy-five. And according to the author's strategy that he's put in the book, what Neary needs to do now is just start moving in every hand. Well, with that four deuce staring at a jack five, although he doesn't know he's staring at a jack five. There's uh -oh. two more clubs. Uh -oh. Now Neary is in some trouble. Both players licking their chops at that flop, saying, wow, I've got a nice flush draw. Of course, Neary doesn't want to make a flush here. Fifty thousand. This be it. I wouldn't be surprised to see Neary go over the top again. Just calls. He better hope a club doesn't come. And it does. Oh, and. Nelson has the nuts. Unbelievable. The jack is the nut flush right now. And Neary is going to bet into him. And this is suicidal. Of course, he has no way of knowing. I mean, he thinks he's got a pretty darn good hand. Absolutely. And because Nelson has a hand that cannot be beat by anything right now, he can afford to just call here. 
I really like how Lee Nelson is not jumping for his chips. He's not acting quickly. He's cogitating. How can I end this tournament on this hand? And I think Lee Nelson is going to figure out that the optimal play is just to call here because, Barry, the only hand that can beat him on the river would be a full house. So if the board doesn't pair, Lee Nelson knows he's got the nut hand. And he does just what you suggest. He does call. And here is the river. It does pair. Now, Neary with a real decision here. He's got a flush, remember. Mine. All in, Thank he call. says. Nelson, Nelson, immediate call. It's over. It is over, and Nelson knows it. And so that will be that, and there is your winner of the Aussie Millions. One million dollars on his birthday. Not a bad gift, and not a bad gift <laughs> for Neary either. Neary with $500,000 in change for finishing second. Well, good job, really good. And the congratulations of a guy who just has infinitely more experience. What a week for Neary, though, and what a trip to Australia. Lee Nelson wins a million dollars, Neary 517, but each 282 and Shore 203. This shirt is going in the Hall of Fame. It's now six for six final tables, and uh, this shirt is not leaving my, my body on a final table from now on. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's, it's really extraordinary. It's a wonderful feeling to win a big tournament. This is the biggest tournament I've ever won, and uh, I'm really happy. It's a, it's, it's, it's an indescribable sensation. What a birthday present. I mean, for it to happen on my birthday, I just, they just have to schedule the main event, final table on my birthday every year. I think I'll be all right. <laughs> you know what, though, Michael? I think it's more than just a shirt. Barry, you don't plow through a field of 418 world-class players without something more in your arsenal than colorful polyester. Well, give it up for your winner. He's a million dollars to the good, the birthday boy, Lee Nelson. That's a wrap for us. For my partner, Michael Koenig, I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody.